A time to every purpose under the heaven welcome folks to episode 087 a time to every purpose under the heaven like always shalom we will be looking at this time we are living in and try to find its purpose from the bible set back and enjoy your program today we hope you enjoy it and give us a like and subscribe to our channel Welcome to OBA, the Open Bible Association. Tell them, like it is. Rebuilding the tabernacle of David that has fallen down. OBA, Open Bible Association is a Studio 772 production. Broadcasting from our home in Grassroots USA. AC version of Psalm 91 prayer template. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to thee who are my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust for it is he who delivers you from the snare of the trapper and from the deadly coronavirus. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you may seek refuge. His faithfulness is a mask and PPE. You will not be afraid of the terror by night, or of the bullets that flies by day, of the virus that stalks in darkness, or of the empty shelves that lays waste at noon. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not approach you. You'll only look on with your eyes and see the recompense of the ones that took advantage of this virus. For you have made the who are my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil will befall you, nor will any plague come near your tent, for he will give his angels charge concerning you, to guard you in all your ways. They will bear you up in their hands, that you do not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and cobra, the young lion and the serpent you will trample down because he has loved me, therefore I will deliver him, I will set him securely on high, because he has known my name. He will call upon me, and I will answer him, I will be with him in trouble, I will rescue him and honor him, with a long life I will satisfy him and let him see my salvation, Yeshua. Hey, ask that guy what time it is. Yeah, you with stack of Bibles in your hands. What time is it? Can you tell me what time it is? Do you know what time it is? It is Bible time. It's time to get out this Bible, open up the books, and start reading some scripture, and let the kingdom of God come into your soul. It's Bible time. Get all excited, folks. Bible time. Let's have some reading of the Word. Opening the Scriptures A Bible time will be taken from one of our favorite books of the Bible, 2 Peter chapter 1 verses 1 to 8. This is one of the most perfect and beautiful thoughts of the whole Bible, which tells us how we are to conduct ourselves in this life. Our readings will be in the King James Version KJV, Bible in Basic English BBE, and the Complete Jewish Bible CJB, KJV, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Saviour Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God, and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity for if these things be in you, and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. BBE, Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who with us have a part in the same holy faith in the righteousness of our God and Saviour Jesus Christ, may grace and peace ever be increasing in you, in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, because by his power he has given us everything necessary for life and righteousness, through the knowledge of him who has been our guide by his glory and virtue, and through this he has given us the hope of great rewards highly to be valued, so that by them we might have our part in God's being, and be made free from the destruction which is in the world through the desires of the flesh. 
So, for this very cause, take every care, joining virtue to faith, and knowledge to virtue, and self-control to knowledge, and a quiet mind to self-control, and fear of God to a quiet mind, and love of the brothers to fear of God, and to love of the brothers, love itself. For if you have these things in good measure, they will make you fertile and full of fruit in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. CBJ, from, Shimon Kepha, a slave and emissary of Yeshua the Messiah to, those who, through the righteousness of our God and of our deliverer Yeshua the Messiah, have been given the same kind of trust as ours, may grace and shalom be yours in full measure, as you come to a full knowledge of God and Yeshua our Lord. God's power has given us everything we need for life and godliness, through our knowing the one who called us to his own glory and goodness. By these he has given us valuable and superlatively great promises, so that through them you might come to share in God's nature and escape the corruption which evil desires have brought into the world. For this very reason, try your hardest to furnish your faith with goodness, goodness with knowledge, knowledge with self-control, self-control with perseverance, perseverance with godliness, godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. For if you have these qualities in abundance, they keep you from being barren and unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Yeshua the Messiah. Just for the beauty of it we are just going to read this very beautiful passage from the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 to 8 in our trio of KJV, GNV, and TLV. How fitting these scriptures are in these strange and wicked days we are living in today. KJV, to everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to cast away, a time to rent, and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. GNB. Everything that happens in this world happens at the time God chooses. He sets the time for birth and the time for death, the time for planting and the time for pulling up, the time for killing and the time for healing, the time for tearing down and the time for building. He sets the time for sorrow and the time for joy, the time for mourning and the time for dancing, the time for making love and the time for not making love, the time for kissing and the time for not kissing. He sets the time for finding and the time for losing, the time for saving and the time for throwing away, the time for tearing and the time for mending, the time for silence and the time for talk. He sets the time for love and the time for hate, the time for war and the time for peace. TLV, for everything there is a season and a time for every activity under heaven, a time to give birth and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to discard, a time to tear apart and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. Let's continue in our readings with just one translation. Let's pick a version we do not use much. The contemporary English version, CEV we will pick up in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 9 to 15. This is the God-given task section of our Sword Bible. CEV, what do we gain by all of our hard work? I have seen what difficult things God demands of us. God makes everything happen at the right time. Yet none of us can ever fully understand all he has done, and he puts questions in our minds about the past and the future. I know the best thing we can do is to always enjoy a life, because God's gift to us is the happiness we get from our food and drink and from the work we do. Everything God has done will last forever, nothing he does can ever be changed. God has done all this, so that we will worship him. Everything that happens has happened before, and all that will be has already been. God does everything over and over again.
Let's continue to the end of chapter 3 starting from verse 16 to verse 22. This section is called, From Dust to Dust, CEV, Everywhere on Earth I Saw Violence and Injustice Instead of Fairness and Justice. So I told myself that God has set a time and a place for everything. He will judge everyone, both the wicked and the good. I know that God is testing us to show us that we are merely animals. Like animals we breathe and die, and we are no better off than they are. It just doesn't make sense. All living creatures go to the same place. We are made from earth, and we return to the earth. Who really knows if our spirits go up and the spirits of animals go down into the earth? We were meant to enjoy our work, and that's the best thing we can do. We can never know the future. OBA, Open Bible Association, shining the light on a sin-sick world, giving them the message of Yeshua, the message of hope. OBA, Open Bible Association, answering the hard questions and being a bridge over troubled water the troubled water of denominationalism and division, and just plain biblical ignorance. By sharing the truth of the Bible in its cultural and historical context, shining the light of understanding on a dark mundane post-Christian atheistic time, reminding folks that God cares and all things are possible with Him. Shalom Kedoshim. This is episode 87. Seems like I'm just moving along here. A little slower than I should be. I should be a few episodes ahead. But I'll catch up. But here's the thing. This is the time that we're living in. It's a very strange time. It's not as strange as you might think. I'm going to have Karen read for me. You know, our Bible time we read. Ecclesiastics. Chapter 3. We did some reading from that. But we're going to ha I'm going to have her read again. And we're going to read it into three parts. And I'm going to explain where we are at in these scriptures. At least my opinion. I mean, this isn't an ironclad thing. But, you know, we try to find ourselves in the Bible. We're supposed to be people of the book. And so this is a place where I think that we're at. That is fitting for today. Maybe that's, that's a better way to say it. So Karen's going to read this. We're going to read it in three parts. And she's going to read this first part. And the birds made a song out of this. You know, turn, turn, for every time there's a season. So they quote it from this chapter. It's been a long time ago since they made that song. Maybe you will remember it, but uh, you know, that's not important the thing. But just listen to the beauty of this song. This chapter three of the book of Ecclesiastes and see how that, that fits for today. Where we can find ourselves in that. So she's going to start reading part one. Reading from the King James Version of the Bible KJV, Ecclesiastes chapter three, part one, verses one to eight. A time for everything. Everything on earth has its own time and its own season. There is a time for birth and death, planting and reaping, for killing and healing, destroying and building, for crying and laughing, weeping and dancing, for throwing stones and gathering stones, embracing and parting. There is a time for finding and losing, keeping and giving, for tearing and sowing, listening and speaking. There is also a time for love and hate, for war and peace. This is kind of preamble for where I think that we're at. We're in more of a part two. And in this part two here, it sort of explains a little bit about what part one is talking about. The time for this and the time for that. And, you know, how that, that fits us in our daily life. And this is kind of like we have the coronavirus, how it came in and sort of took over and all that. And, put us in lockdown, why we need to go back to work, 
and this one will explain that in a, in a large way here. So I'm going to have Karen read part two. Part two, the God-given task verses 9 to 15. What do we gain by all of our hard work? I have seen what difficult things God demands of us. God makes everything happen at the right time. Yet none of us can ever fully understand all he has done, and he puts questions in our minds about the past and the future. I know the best thing we can do is to always enjoy a life, because God's gift to us is the happiness we get from our food and drink and from the work we do. Everything God has done will last forever, nothing he does can ever be changed. God has done all this, so that we will worship him. Everything that happens has happened before, and all that will be has already been. God does everything over and over again. Man, this is powerful. And this is where we're, we are at. We are at in this, this point here, where God does everything over and over again. And whatever God does is forever. We can't add to it. We can't take from it. It is the way that it is. So, you know, at the end of the day, we may think that this is the worst place that humanity has ever been in, but it hasn't. So what should we be doing at this time? Well, this is, we should be worshiping God. This is what our life is for. And he gives a good account into that, into the next part. And I'm going to have Karen read this last part for me. And this will be the whole song. Maybe I'll go back and have a read the whole song. Right now, we're we'll just going to have to read this last part of the song. It'll take us to the end, to verse 22. Part 3 from dust to dust, verses 16 to the end, verse 22. Everywhere on earth I saw violence and injustice instead of fairness and justice. So I told myself that God has set a time and a place for everything. He will judge everyone, both the wicked and the good. I know that God is testing us to show us that we are merely animals. Like animals we breathe and die, and we are no better off than they are. It just doesn't make sense. All living creatures go to the same place. We are made from earth, and we return to the earth. Who really knows if our spirits go up and the spirits of animals go down into the earth? We were meant to enjoy our work, and that's the best thing we can do. We can never know the future. And, and that's really the end of it right there. I mean, we have a lot of assurances, it seems, but most of them are like you can't put them onto a, a tangible thing. But we do know that our work and the things that we do is the only really tangible things that we have. And we should be enjoying our work. That's the best things that we can do right there. It says, we are meant to enjoy our work, and that is the best thing we can do. And we can never know the future. And that's the way that it is. We don't know what's around the corner from us. I knew a lot of people that seem to think that they know the future. I've heard a lot of prophecies, and some of them have been uh, kind of right at one point, and then they go off onto a tangent and they're wrong. I mean, so I, I'm not going to judge them as bad, although it is our job to judge prophecy. But sometimes we haven't seen the end of it yet. I don't know, sometimes whenever people prophesy, they kind of get everything mixed up and they, they may say something that they probably shouldn't say. So they get presumptuous and they go off into some tangents. And, you know, I, I've seen this happen. I've seen one pastor sort of destroyed because he made a prophecy about, you know, a divorce or remarriage deal. And it ended up the way that the pastor said, but he took a lot of slack for it because it didn't work out speedily like that. I mean, it took time for it to come to pass, but it did come to pass. And so, we might, we might be, be quick, quick to brand somebody as a false prophet. Maybe we should. Maybe we should give it a little bit more time and see how things is going to uh, pan out. And then if there's an if in there in a prophecy, that prophecy can change and people may not take that if into consideration. Like if my people humble themselves and pray. Well, a lot of people have not humbled themselves and have not 
operating. And they may not even be his people. And, you know, how do you know his people? Well, his people that are called by, are they being called by his name? Why would they be called by his name? What does that even really mean? Could it be that they're doing the works that he told them to do? Uh, because his name really doesn't mean anything unless you are doing and following his uh, commandments, his uh, instructions, and living for the way that he told us to live. And so, therefore, you are being, you know, there used to be an old saying that I heard, is, is, there enough, is there enough evidence if you were on trial that you would be found guilty of being a Christian or a believer? Are there any, is there enough evidence that you are being a Christian? Well, what would be the evidence? Would it be, well, let's see, I watch TV 20 hours a day, there's 24 hours. I pray five minutes uh, last week. I mean, so we look at things in that sense of the word, but ultimately I wanted to bring this down to earth in that we need to reopen because the only thing that's really there is for the good that we can do and the work that we do. And if we're in this stay at home, things, then we just uh, exchange one set of parents that we didn't listen to, which would be our mother and dad saying, go to your room, and we open up the window and climb out, or we don't come in when they tell us to come in, to another set of parents that we don't particularly want to listen to, called the government that's telling us, go to your house. In other words, go to your room. So they are actually taking over on our um, our independence as if we're grown up. We are not little children anymore, and we should know how to conduct ourselves. I mean, some of the things, like maybe the social distancing, and as bad as I hate to say it, maybe wearing a mask or whatever. You know, I have an idea on that. If we were all to get masks, like uh, Nancy Pelosi or uh, President Trump, and we started wearing these masks, Everywhere that we went, like a Halloween mask or something, I bet this idea of the mask stuff would stop because they couldn't have people being seen and actually embarrassing them. They would not let that go on for a minute. But maybe that's just the exact thing that we ought to do is when we have to wear a mask and wear one of these uh, so-called political characters and do a little bit of political theater, I guess you would call it. But you know, in the long run, it is still our duty to do good. And it's still our duty to enjoy the work of our hands. I mean, this is what we go to work for. You know, maybe it is to buy that, uh, you know, 65 inch TV, or maybe it is to have that new car or whatever that we do. And it's, a, you know, God given right for us to enjoy the works that we did. And, you know, they're trying to take that away from us, and I don't particularly like it. Our works of our hands may be the ability to go to church and to assemble and to be around other people and to sing the songs of praise and, and worship the way that we think that we should be worshiping. And all this other kind of things is, well, wait a minute here. Who do we serve? Do we serve the government or do we serve God? Well, I hate to tell you this, but I serve the government of God. And it isn't the government of this world. I'm just an ambassador. And I just try to do the best I can as a believer. And I'm hoping that that's what everybody's doing. But, you know, when I read this last part, I'm going to have Karen read it again. That may not be the case. Because I'm just going to have her read it again. And uh, I'll come back. Part 3 from Dust to Dust, verses 16 to the end, verse 22. Everywhere on earth I saw violence and injustice instead of fairness and justice. So I told myself that God has set a time and a place for everything. He will judge everyone, both the wicked and the good. I know that God is testing us to show us that we are merely animals. Like animals we breathe and die, and we are no better off than they are. It just doesn't make sense. All living creatures go to the same place. We are made from earth, and we return to the earth. Who really knows if our spirits go up and the spirits of animals go down into the earth? We were meant to enjoy our work, and that's the best thing we can do. We can never know the future. 
Honestly, since we can never know the future, everything is uncertain. So the best things that we can do, like, is just flat out tell us, is to enjoy our work. We are meant to enjoy our work. We are not meant to be unhappy in our work. And I always told people that, hey, wait a minute here, you know, if there's a job that you're doing and you don't like, well, you have to skill up to something that you do like. And I've done this. I've had to do this. I've had many a job that was just back-breaking hard work that I've done. And I said, I don't want to do this. And so what did I do? Well, I went to, first of all, I went and got a GED. Second of all, I went uh, to a few trade schools. And I took advantage of those opportunities to do those things to be able to skill up. And then ultimately, I went and I got certified in different things. I did, didn't go to a school for like computers, but I ended up working at Dell. Uh, I went to and took, you know, books and stuff, like maybe some online stuff of working on computers. And I got my A, a plus and a network plus. And, you know, you have to skill up. I didn't have those skills. I wasn't born with them. My parents didn't teach them. And even school was, God, school was awful. And I got thrown out of the second floor window at Old High School in the eighth grade. Um, and, you know, when, when my mom took me to school, they said, well, things like that don't go on here. <laughs> it's like, okay. So this is, this is what we have to live with. But you can overcome those things. How do you overcome them? Well, that may be a problem for some, but there is help that you can find that will point you in the right direction if you want to do good and find things that you enjoy doing and so that you can enjoy the work that you do. But right now, we're being robbed from those opportunities to do that, and it just isn't right. And I'm going to have this beautiful song read from the beginning to end. And um, one more time, and then I'm going to close with a prayer. Reading from the King James Version of the Bible KJV, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, part 1 verses 1 to 8. A time for everything. Everything on earth has its own time and its own season. There is a time for birth and death, planting and reaping, for killing and healing, destroying and building, for crying and laughing, weeping and dancing, for throwing stones and gathering stones, embracing and parting. There is a time for finding and losing, keeping and giving, for tearing and sowing, listening and speaking. There is also a time for love and hate, for war and peace. Part 2. The God-given task verses 9 to 15. What do we gain by all of our hard work? I have seen what difficult things God demands of us. God makes everything happen at the right time. Yet none of us can ever fully understand all he has done, and he puts questions in our minds about the past and the future. I know the best thing we can do is to always enjoy a life, because God's gift to us is the happiness we get from our food and drink and from the work we do. Everything God has done will last forever, nothing he does can ever be changed. God has done all this, so that we will worship him. Everything that happens has happened before, and all that really has already been, God does everything over and over again. Part 3 from dust to dust verses 16 to the end verse 22. Everywhere on earth I saw violence and injustice instead of fairness and justice. So I told myself that God has set a time and a place for everything. He will judge everyone, both the wicked and the good. I know that God is testing us to show us that we are merely animals. Like animals we breathe and die, and we are no better off than they are. It just doesn't make sense. All living creatures go to the same place. We are made from earth, and we return to the earth. Who really knows if our spirits go up and the spirits of animals go down into the earth? We were meant to enjoy our work, and that's the best thing we can do. We can never know the future. Well, thank, thank you, you, Karen. Karen. Beautiful voice that you have. And for reading for me. So I'm going to end this with a prayer. Abba, Father, we pray to you, we pray to you today that we thank you for the many gifts that you have given us. And we are praying that we get the opportunity to go back to work and that we find the things that we, the work that we enjoy doing and the ability to do good and to follow you, to worship you, and to rejoice in your goodness. In the name of Yeshua, we pray. Amen.
Shalom, hallelujah, we are so glad you was here with us in this episode. We hope that this program has been a blessing to you that we have given you some time to take your mind off this complicated mundane wicked world and to take you to the sacred and Kodesh kingdom of God. If only for this moment in time in the spirit the Ruach HaKodesh. If you have any topics or concerns you can find our links to our positive solutions Feel No Better Facebook page. Drop us a line there. Our link to all our endeavors can be found at our website, studio772.com. If we have been a blessing to you give us a like and subscribe. We would love to hear from you. As always thank you for listening to us and may the Almighty keep you protect and guide you and give you shalom. Yeshua's peace that passes all understanding. We pray this prayer in Yeshua's authority. Amen. OBA Open Bible Association is a Studio 772 production, broadcasting from our home in Grassroots USA.